Yo, what's up? What's going on, guys? It's Pixels here, and today I'm going to be making a video for you on the best Rust console settings, and I'll be going through all the game settings, showing you why or why not you should or shouldn't, you know, be using uh, these settings and what they do, how they affect your game, what can benefit you to have a better experience in the game all around, and yeah, let's get straight to it. So first things first, though. What we want to look at and come here to is controller layout and basically you'll see that in the bottom right corner it says swap special action and you'll see that my l1 button is switching quick turn quick drop all that stuff isn't really useful you want headlock hold and that allows you to do this you know i'm looking in separate directions while being able to you know move i can move run and look so you know it's really um useful for you in almost any situation if you need to look behind your back as you're running you know you're on a horse or whatever it may be on a boat you need to check your surroundings you know it's just the best uh, special action there is you know there's not anything better than having that as your um special action and your button layout, you know, switch sticks, all that stuff, that's all preference. For me, I just use the default settings, just um, have that head look special uh, setting on. Same with building. I don't have anything, you know, special going on here, just default settings with that. But we can get into game settings. Um, auto equip, I have that off. Uh, it doesn't really benefit you in any way to have auto equip on unless, you know, you do the specifications with like the stims or whatever maybe that's for you but for me and my preference i don't think auto equip is really necessary because it can uh screw you over in certain situations uh, auto reload is definitely necessary it can help you in almost any situation you're in you know it's pretty easy to press the button but it's nice to have it there to where when you're out of ammo you're already reloading and it's got your back you know you don't got to worry about everything or anything um voice chat everyone quick chat everyone that's personal preference if you want to hear everyone's voice in game and see that their uh their chats um in the server uh i don't see why you wouldn't want that you know it's rust you kind of want to see and hear those things so i keep that on streamer privacy of course i have that on to prevent um stream sniping and you know all sorts of stuff like that so if you record videos and or stream definitely keep streamer privacy on so let's move on to controls. Um, like I said, controller layout, same thing, default, and just have head look on. Vibration, uh, I have off. I really dislike vibration on any game I play, so that's another personal preference one. Same with light bar effects, it really does nothing. But, you know, these are all preference. If I feel that you can get better, uh, like a grip on the controller and recoil control without the vibration, you know, messing with it, so that's why I personally have vibration turned off and light bar effects um, sometimes at night in my room it can get glowy and distracting so I have that off of course aim assist is off uh, push to talk I have it on toggle so I just press the button once press your touchpad and you're in game chat talking you know better than holding on to it because while you're trying to do certain actions you don't really want to be holding on to a voice chat button uh, cycle mode is all slots, so it's saying like my hot bar here. I cycle through all of them, and when I go here to uh, the settings, where'd it go? Oh yeah, so there'll be like filled slots only, so only those slots that have an item in them, you know. That's just really the only difference there, but all slots is what you should probably keep it on. Um, disable quick chat, they'll turn off the server chats for you. Like I said, I'd personally keep that on. Uh, sprint input for toggle, so you're not holding it the whole time, so your auto run, you know, you just toggle your sprint button and it's on. You know, along with your auto run, that's how I run it. Uh, it's better than holding onto it the whole time. You can kind of just have like a light one button press and you're already sprinting. And then on top of that, it just activates your auto run. And it's a lot easier and lighter on your analog sticks. 
Now this one here, not a lot of people uh, know about using, which is hold for crouch. And the reason we do this is when you have toggle, let's say I press it, and let's say I'm just sitting like this, I have to press it again to come back up. But when I press it with hold, I can just move around and be crouching, and I'm automatically coming back up. The game is doing it for me. So I don't need to, you know, press it and press it again. I press it, let go, I'm up. So this can help for in-game fights, you know, when you're crouch spamming and it's automatically putting you back up, you don't have to press the button again. It's a slight benefit to you. It's not always going to do, you know, the craziest effect. But I definitely put it on hold. It's pretty useful to have for me. And here's the good stuff. Now, a lot of people might look at this and think this is crazy, only having a 140 boost multiplier. But these settings right here are all 100% personal preference. It's just for me. You kind of what I what I look at this as. Let me just show more of it. As you want to be able to turn and flick really fast, and have your aim really slowed down, so that you can be outside of the aim. And then once you like fastly, and then once you aim in, it's a lot more slower and controllable. So for example, like I could snap onto someone and then I'm here and it's a lot more slower, but then it's like, you know what I mean? So it's like that, you know, you let go and you're, you know, you're in that uh, sensitivity boost. But once you're aiming in, it's a lot more slower, you know, and controlled rather than being this fast. So some people might disagree and want their um, game like super or their aim sense super fast I don't think that's beneficial I think you should probably keep it for a uh, controller about a 20 to 20 you know 6 is what I like to run it at and for regular sensitivity XY and boost that's all up to you but if you do want like a decently you know you don't want an insanely fast settings but you want something that's like a little bit above being right in the middle I'd say run this because it's pretty fast, it's pretty, you know, controllable and beneficial. All my uh, scoping and on everything feels really fluid and really nice with these settings. So, like, give them a try, you know, run PTB. This is really mainly for people that don't really have, like, a core settings down that they use yet and they're kind of looking for ideas or other people's settings, you know. So, you, if you already have something that you prefer, you know, don't bother. But if you really are looking for a new setup with all these, then definitely give it a try in like a PTB server, anything like that. Um, you know, and to show that inertia, you always want fully zero. It just can give you motion sickness, mess with your camera. It's not really useful at all. It's only a negative effect. Dead zone, again, I, I keep them at the default value because I have the DualShock Pro controller, so it's kind of like already has like a dead zone thing built into it that I mess with so I leave it at that but otherwise I would probably lower your dead zone on both sticks to about an 8 just to have a little bit quicker reaction time but personally I already have that sitting down on my controller outside of the game so I don't need that um, invert Y, invert X, m unless you're a crazy man you don't want those on they'll invert all your directions and inputs and I personally do not prefer to have that on but yeah, let's move on to the HUD. Um, scale, I have it at the smallest scale, so it pick, uh, covers the least amount of screen possible. Because once it's really big, you know, this is it at 75%, that HUD down there. Then we go to options, go back to that HUD. We put this puppy all the way up. You see how much more that's covering. You know, now its default value is, I think, like 100. So let's see that's still pretty big you know that's covering up a lot of screen so what I like to do is I'll take one moment I'll take I'll take and put it all the way down just all the way down keep the opacity on you want your stance indicator inventory indicator on and your ping on all three of these settings will benefit you so if you see in the left of my um, toolbar my HUD bar right here that shows how I'm standing you know I'm crouched it crouches I'm like that you know it's standing when I run I run I use it mostly for indicating when I'm gonna initiate auto run you see now I'm auto running and it tells you 
it's pretty nice so you don't have to like guess when you're doing it you just know immediately when to let go uh, inventory indicator of course is useful you see how many slots you have while you're picking things up it's just nice to have as well as uh, ping um, it's really important to be able to know your ping to know if you're the reason why maybe you're getting invalids could be lag server issue all around it's just really beneficial to have your ping always on but um yeah that's just all there is for the hud you know hud visibility full that's what i like to have um opacity you know full all that good stuff now audio is really up to you you have to mess with your own headset per se but i don't know why that's even i'm gonna mess with this i like to have footsteps at about 95 i think i was uh changing it for a video or something but yeah and no, i have footsteps nearly maxed out everything you know about at the default value that it's set at but um all of this again is just going to be your preference you know a lot of these settings come down to what you're comfortable with and what you want to use to benefit your game and your play style so my word might not be what's best for you but this is just you know to give you a gist of how you would go about changing all your settings and it's really geared towards the new player or if you're just looking for how how necessarily you should have a default value for what you should be using probably just try these um i've only tweaked it a little bit it just makes a little bit of a difference with the in-game music not being so loud and your hit markers not you know being so loud i keep them a little quieter but a lot of people like to have everything else quieter and their only hit markers and footsteps up that's another way to play this so it's all up to you like i said personal preference graphics is a big thing so depth of field i would recommend always having off because it's going to add a blur to your screen as it says below a blur to distant objects or those not in center focus so it's going to be kind of like a uh, like the vintage i don't even know how to say that word but this thing it's kind of like that but the opposite it's just blurring an area where you're not focused and it's not really useful at all it doesn't do anything for you that's beneficial some people might say it does but i completely disagree that it just messes with your screen and it's never good to have on same with blood um, when you're getting shot at or attacked your screen will start to turn red when you have this on and if you have it off your screen will just stay the default tone the whole time other than um unless you're like freezing i believe but uh yeah so it's just really useful to not have any interference with your overlays and your screen or anything like that like at all times so this should be a clear screen when you're getting shot at and it helps you you know counter back and fire back without any um anything in your way sharpening i keep that on it just makes the graphics you know a little bit more clean cut a little bit better um all around like it says it just makes uh the image look sharper but the image quality isn't quite as good so it's just a little bit uh for frame rate i'd say i'm i'm geared more towards having better frames on this so that's why i have sharpening on uh darkens the corners of the screen slightly to make greater focus on the center so this i do have on because it's very 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 slight and it just that real slight boost to everything on the edges being a little bit more darked out and your center being brighter does help a little bit compared to the depth of field where it's blurring instead of darkening so i say definitely try this out you might not even be able to notice the difference to be completely honest with you but if you can definitely uh you know rock it if it helps you go for it <laughs> terrain quality i have on low for frame rate um when you have it on medium and high a lot of pop-ins will happen um you know it's like or my bad so a lot less pop-ins will happen but a lot more uh crashes in your game will happen you're trying to have your uh everything looks super nice when you're running it on high everything's gonna run harder and with a game like rust console that's really not what you want at this point in the game because it's just a very buggy game so what i like to do is just run it at lower medium um sometimes i'll bump it up to medium when i'm recording a like video that i want it to look a little better but 
Yeah, no, so basically this will have a higher render distance, but less quality in image when you have it on low. So I'll be able to see people at a farther distance, even though the image quality will be worse. It's pretty nice because then your render distance for, you know, let's say your M2 or L9 Bolti will be a lot farther than someone who's playing on high and their pop-ins aren't coming in. So it's kind of a little cheeky setting that not a lot of people uh, pay attention to. FPS limit, um, V turns on uh, V-Sync and locks the frame rate, always have this on, it just makes it perform at the most optimal way your uh, monitor and game will perform. There's nothing really more to that, that's just a good setting to have on. <clears throat> FOV is a really opinionated setting too, I guess, or preference I should say, preference based setting. Because right now I'm at 90 FOV and you can see these things look, you know, whatever distance. But then if I go here and turn this back to a default value of 60, everything's a lot more close. It looks like I'm moving slower. It just doesn't feel as good. But a lot of people like this because the bodies of your uh, opponents will be a lot bigger and larger so the hitbox is technically larger but me personally I really don't you know I, I can't play on this setting like 60 FOV is a nightmare for me like I just can't do it it doesn't feel right so I like to rock full 90 um, depends on you know sometimes I'll drop it down to 85 you know, I'll probably rock 85, honestly, but field of view is really just through distance of objects, distance of what you're seeing, how it's perceived, even though it's the same distance. You see now, it's a lot more, I just feel like it runs a lot better without that super zoomed in feeling. And it's just a better game experience for me. And motion blur, I always turn off because of like motion sickness and it's like, you probably all know what motion blur is. I just personally, I keep that off, you know, cause it blurs your screen when you're like turning left to right and it can just interfere with your view and everything like that. And it's normally not gonna benefit you in any way to have a motion blur on. So I would stick with just making sure you keep that setting off for now. And, um, you know, maybe if you do prefer a little bit of realism in motion blur, then go for it. But me personally, I don't think I'd ever rock that setting. But, yeah, guys, I think I went through all of the console settings here. Um, there's a decent amount. I mean, I'm pretty sure PC has, a, you know, millions and mores with graphics and all that stuff. But, you know, this is what I find the most useful to use. Best performance, best frames, and all that stuff. So, definitely give it a try, you know. If it, you know, works for you, that's great. If it doesn't, you know, no problem. You know, just modify and tweak everything in your own way. That's what's important about settings is only basing it off of your preference. This is just kind of like a palette or like a guide to show, you know, what these things do and how they're going to affect your game and why or why not you shouldn't or should use those settings. So definitely just, you know, work on them yourself and use your own things that you're comfortable with and what you enjoy using for your experience but yeah other than that guys i hope you guys enjoyed the video definitely going to be making a lot of content this wipe i hope hope you're all excited for wipe as well um i'm recording this thursday you know hours before wipe um really do hope it is does go good for all of you guys as well as myself i'll be live streaming probably We'll say Friday. Uh, it's Thursday now, so tomorrow or Saturday. Not quite sure on that yet, but definitely going to be consistent with the uploads this way, and live stream shorts, all that stuff. So just make sure you stay tuned and you know, stay legit, guys. Peace.